Hey guys, back again with another review, this time of 2013's But Then. Yes, it's on DVD, should have been on Blu-ray, but that's another story. I originally watched this on a HD uh, stream. And before I get into the actual review, I watched it on my... I, when I had my bad back problem and I was stuck in bed, I had my laptop. And I put it on, and I tell you something, this is that type of film where really you need to watch it on your laptop or computer, preferably in the dark, to make it more eerie kind of thing. Because it's based all around webcams and everything. So it would be kind of, you know, it's kind of like getting atmosphere in there. But anyway, it stars Melanie Papalia. David Scrooge McSculkin. <laughs> I don't know what he says. It's so bloody long. It's like, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 characters. Anyway, Matt Reddy, Adam Shapiro, Victoria Handin, Matt Lasky, Jeffrey Bino, and some others. And basically, the special features on the disc are commentary with writer director Zachary Donhu. And producers Dan Clifton and David Brooks. Behind the scenes and a trailer. And it's from IFC Midnight in the US. Now the inside is basically just a disc art of the same cover which sucks. Anyway. So basically Melanie Papalia plays Elizabeth. Elizabeth Benton. And basically she's getting a grant. She's asked for a grant. So it's study people on webcam sites and what people like online basically there's a website that she does joins called the den the name of the film the den and basically on there it randomizes and lets you talk to random people you've never spoken before or possibly never will speak to again it's kind of like you press a button it randomizes and just gives you someone to talk to now she's waiting for the grant she tells her boyfriend and basically it's not the it's not the best but he's kind of like oh i want to get in your knickers and you know all that stuff so she gets a phone call and it turns out she's got the grant she's over the moon her supervisor's like hey yeah you know this like don't let me down elizabeth you know so she basically starts to work. Now, this is like a 24-hour job. She's doing it basically not having any real socialising time. The odd, phone, the odd webcam call with her boyfriend and so forth. All this is on the webcams and on mobile phones and surveillance camera kind of stuff. The surveillance cameras come later in the film. The phones are like at scenes and the webcams are like... I'll let you know as I get through it. So basically, she starts and she sees basically naked men... Uh, men dressed up in women's clothing, you know, all sorts of different kinds of things. You know, things you see on the internet a lot. But not like, not, not a normal people do it, but you know the creepy stuff you get, like like a bloke touching himself in women's knickers, or a bloke sticking a dildo in his mouth. Whatever, right? Whatever, you, whatever makes you feel creepy, right? That's something she sees. And there's like a sponge, like a toy penis that ejaculates and all this. And she makes a Nigerian guy who tells her he's a prince. And she goes, does this, has this ever worked? And he goes, oh, yes. And she changes again. Goes, bye. And changes. It's very realistic in a lot of ways. Because a lot of the people she meets through it are the type of people you would meet for a place like that. And then she comes to a, a video of a woman getting murdered. Basically, a girl gets murdered in front of her. And she gets all stressed out, calls the police, and basically they say that the chances are it would be, um, it could be just fake, like most things on the internet, you know, like a prank. So she's like, oh, I don't know, it was really real. So she starts getting messages from this person. Their webcam won't come on, but they talk to her and say things to her, you know, like for typing. And basically, as the person gets more and more creepy, they find out that she witnessed the murder more. And basically, they start stalking her on the camera and hacking into her laptop. There's a scene where they hack into her laptop when she's having sex with her boyfriend. And they record it and send it to the supervisor, who then's not, not that happy because that's not what she's supposed to be doing on the assignment. You see what I'm saying? 
So, then basically, things start happening, like, a boyfriend gets taken, a friend who she asks, who's a hacker, Max, to come around and have a look, basically says he can't really do much, and something happens to him, her friends, and you get like these scenes where you see the person kind of walk into the home with a camera recording, and where she can see the person on the laptop behind her friend, it's like, quick, get out of there. It's very, it's very cool. I liked it a lot. I like the way they did it, you know. Uh, there's a bit where there's a, I think it's a, I think it's a laptop, but it's in evidence. And Melanie's around there talking to like the policeman. And you can just see them talking through that blurriness. It's really effective in my view. I then basically, after that, some guy in a mask, like a, Bang bang tries to attack her and it gets the shit breaks up and goes boom and basically all this stuff starts happening. She stabs a guy, tries to get away, another guy gets her. Now at this point, I thought, oh, it's probably her boyfriend and her friend Max. They probably were pulling a prank on her because they probably both wanted her and they both peed off with her. Right? That's what I thought. So I'm waiting. So then you see her and I think it's, is it Max? Or Damien, I think it's it's one of them, and they they they're talking to each other on webcams on these laptops when they've got these things on their heads and everything, and they're stuck in the rooms, and basically Mac, you see Max getting killed, and then you see a boyfriend getting killed, and then I can't, I, then she escapes somehow, and she runs outside, and you get the surveillance camera called in and moves. And you and at this point you get very eerie because you get this kind of thing like you're watching somebody panicking and but they're gonna get they're gonna get got because you can feel this this person there or these people there you can just feel it in the background every move she makes you know and you get some jump scare bits and then she gets outside and she gets in the car and she goes to drive off and there's like twenty of them no shitting like one jumps on the car one's chaser. And you're like, bloody hell, what's going on here? They catch her. They hang her upside down, and then I think they shoot her. And what? I, and then you kind of find out, because this is the spoiler of the movie, basically. You kind of find out that these people record these lives of these people they're tormenting. And then kill them and kind of record it and process it on a website for people to kind of see. The life and the death of the person they've been tormenting. Like from day one to their death. And it was very creepy. But at the same time I kind of thought the film could have been better in some aspects. Like the whole webcam thing, phone thing and uh, surveillance cam was excellent. I found it very original in a way. You know. Because I didn't expect that like that. And because we're in, I didn't know much about the movie, just what I saw from the trailer. So I was like, wow, I'm really liking this movie. And obviously, being in bed watching a laptop made it more effective because I'm watching on a laptop with a camera. I've like a webcam that would be on my end. So it was very, but then at the very end, you see this, you see this bloke sign up for this site to watch it. But when he clicks the button, you see the English people she talked to earlier. But it was them on there. So it's kind of scary because it's like maybe the people who their victim communicates with then gets chosen next. Maybe. I'm not sure. But I really did like Melanie Papalia in this. And I liked all the other people. I thought they were great. And for a 79 minute movie, it wasn't a bad movie at all. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought, I'm sorry, not 79, 76 minutes. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was original, I thought it was unique, and I thought it was really, really good. I can't rate it highly enough. After I watched it, after I watched the HD, the HD um, stream of it, I went looking for it, to buy it. And it's, not, it's rare that I go out and buy a movie straight after I've watched it, if I've watched it on a stream. So I looked it up, and there was no Blu-ray. And I was like, Ugh. I was like, does that mean I have to buy a DVD? 
So now look on Amazon. On DVD, it was $26.99. I was like, paying that. So me and Donna, my wife, we went into uh, we went into Walmart, and they had it in there for $9.99. I was like, I'd have that, and I bought it. So yeah, I really think this is a good movie. I think it could have been better in some parts. Like, there's a bit where she's trying to adjust the uh, feeds from the video where she was talking to her boyfriend, and as she does, as it happens, you can see the um, you can see the person behind them grab hold of them. I like that. I thought that was quite unique. And I just like the whole story. I like how she'd get phone calls from friends and they'd be talking on like FaceTime or on the webcam. It made it real. It didn't make it... What I mean by real is it made it that this person actually had relationships. You find with films of this kind of nature, they kind of go in their own little world. Now, I looked up to see if there were any sites like The Den. And there is. There was one called Stranger Finder or something. And uh, you click the button and you talk to random people. So it was just like the den. And that was so creepy. When I figured out I could do that, that was even more creepy for me. Now, don't get away, it doesn't surprise me that stuff like that exists. But it's so easy to get into, it made it a little more creepy for me, you know. But yeah, Melanie Papalia was great in it. I saw her recently in Super Hybrid. She's got the best death scene in that movie. But I don't know many of the others. I've probably seen them in other films, but I don't recognise them. Now, this movie came out in 2013. And if I'm honest with you, I better give my ending thoughts now because I'm really rambling about this movie. Okay. The Den. I recommend giving this film a watch. It's a low budget film. It's a, kind of, it's a low budget B movie. But it's worth your time. I highly recommend watching it because it's one of those films which I can I'll be able to watch again and again and again. It's actually in my one of my it's actually in my top horror movies of 2013 14 because it came out in 2014 on DVD but it's, it was made in 2013. So it's kind of, it's in my new top 10 of those two years now because I just thought it was fantastic. I give this film a 4.5 the reason I don't give it the other 0.5 is because I believe it could have been a lot better in some places. And I just think that the actress, Melanie Papilia, has got a bright future if she keeps on acting the way she did in this. She was awesome. Especially during the sex scene, where she, where the bloke, were, <coughs> where her boyfriend was eating her out. She was great. It was believable. But anyway, sorry guys. <coughs> But yeah, I highly recommend it. Definitely give it a watch. If you've seen it, let me know what you think. If not, go out and pick it up because you're not because you're missing out because this is one of the top horrors I've seen this year so far. So thanks guys for watching. As always, take care and let me know what you thought of the movie. Bye.